Hello, welcome to this video on the fundamental theorem of line integrals. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm hopping you through this multivariable calculus journey. We're in the middle of introducing line integrals, and we've we've done previously what a line integral is, how do you calculate it. In general, we want to be able to calculate it in a in a quicker way, a more efficient way, and under certain circumstances you can. If ever it's the case that the line integral is equal to a constant no matter what the path is then what we say is that that line integral is independent of path there's more that's going on behind the scenes we um, we use the vocabulary that the, the vector field is the gradient of some function it's a called a potential function and we use the Greek letter Phi for that and so F is equal to the gradient of Phi when this is the case. The uh, differential, the inside to the line integral is called an exact differential. It's the differential of the phi. The question becomes then, how do you know if this is the case? I mean, you, you, you do it a few times and you recognize, oh, this curve and this curve, well, is it gonna be true no matter what curve I use? In that case, um, we're going to show you how to do the check. There's a check to see whether this is possible. A quick, easy check. And when, when the check is going to come back as the affirmative, then we're going to find out how to actually proceed from there. All right? When you're in two dimensions where you just have an i and j component, then um, if this is going to be true, if, if the inside of the integral is going to be the differential, then um, f will be the gradient of phi. Now, when it's set up this way, the if, if it is going to be true, then um, the i component of f is is the x partial of phi, and the j component of f is the y partial of phi. So p should be equal to phi sub x. And Q should be equal to phi sub y already. So I'm just trying to show you where the check comes from. Here is the check. The check is found in the fact that the mixed partial, they should be equal to each other. So if you already have uh, phi x and you take a y partial, phi x y, it should be equal to phi y and you take an x partial. Okay. So phi x with respect to y is equal to phi y with respect to x. And the check is going to be exactly that, that py is equal to qx. If that's the case, then there is a phi out there, and we can then attack how to find out what the phi is. Okay? That's for 2D. Um, for 3D, it's a little more involved. You have a third component there, but it's the same kind of setup, though. It even starts out the same. P is the y, uh, x partial and Q is the y partial. There's a new guy now, Z, R, who's the Z partial. Okay, for mixed partials, there'll be three different ways of mixing these. Your XY should be your YX. That's your PY equals QX. Your XZ should be your ZX. That is your PZ equals RX. And your YZ should be ZY. And that is your QZ equals RY. Three part check, three part check. It involves the um, the two part check, the one way, uh, the two D check. It involves that. It involves. We have to do three more though, uh, two more. All right, great. So, the fundamental theorem of calculus says that oh, if you go find out who that antiderivative is, you can just plug in the bounds, plug in the upper limit, then subtract from that what you get by plugging the lower limit. So the fundamental theorem of line integrals is going to be the same thing. If you go out and find out what that potential function is, phi, then you can plug in the ending point and subtract what you get from plugging in the starting point. Okay. You need to be true that the, the, that, you know, that the inside is a direct, direct exact differential, that f is conservative, that the line integral is independent of path, but when it's the case, you can just evaluate phi. And that'll be the same value as the integral. All right, so when you're independent of path, you have two options. You go out, find out what phi is, and evaluate it at the endpoints. Or, independence of path means that you can pick any path. You could be given the path, but you can pick any path you want. 
because th they'll be true no matter what path you're on. So you want to pick something that's convenient. Pick something that is horizontal or vertical. Okay. All right, those are your options. Now, in the previous video, we saw that um, we were going from 0, 0 to 5, 5. And we did it four different ways. In horizontal and vertical, that for one way. Straight line for a second way. Along the parabola y equals x squared for a third way. And then we had some sinusoidal path for the fourth way. And each time, the value of the line in row was 25. The vector field, working behind the scenes, is the vector uh, vector field f, which is equal to y in the i component and x in the j component. Is it true? Is the check true? Is, is, is qx my, equal to py? Well, qx is a 1, and py is a 1. So yes, it is true that qx equals py. f is a gradient field. f is the gradient of some function. How can we figure out who the function is? How do we find the potential function? Well, p is equal to y, and q is equal to x. What could phi be so that the x partial is y and the y partial is x? Just use your intuition. You don't need anything fancy for that. What kind of function has a y partial of x and an x partial of y? It's the function xy. That's it. So we can get 25 by evaluating this phi at the ending point phi 5 and subtract it from it, evaluating at the starting point, 0, 0. But that starting point, plugging in 0, 0 to this, to this phi function, the product will be 0. Plugging in phi, 5 to this phi function, the product is 25. You can drop the plus c, of course. All right, great. So we want to be able to know how to find it if, if our intuition fails us, though. OK? And so here's an example. We have. Um, we're going to figure out what the potential function is, or um, if there is even one. Um, in this particular two-dimensional setting, we have 2xy cubed, and the quantity of x squared plus 1 is multiplied by 3y squared. That's our p. That's our q. For f to be the gradient field, we need py to be equal to qx, and it is. You see, py is 6xy squared, and qx is 6xy squared. F is a gradient field. How do we find the phi? Our intuition might fail us. We're not able to conceive of a function who has 2xy cubed as its x partial and then 3y squared times the quantity of x squared plus 1 as its y partial. It's not going to be so easy as that last one with the x and the y. So we have to work it out. Here's one way to work it out. We integrate p with respect to x. See, p is already a partial. It's the x partial. Integrating the x partial, you get the function back. So we're integrating with respect to x, and p is equal to uh, 2xy cubed. You integrate that, you get x squared y cubed, plus a constant. Now this constant could be, it's, it's in terms of x. In terms of x, the function g of y is constant. So it's not just a plus c anymore. It's plus a function of the other variable that it might involve a plus c, but maybe it'll involve some functions, some y's, you know, a function with y's in it. But nothing with x and y together, though. Okay, so if we integrate p, we get that. If we integrate q, we're going to do it with respect to y, though. Um, we're going to end up with uh, y cubed over 3. So the 3s will cancel out. The x squared plus 1 is a constant. Or um, we and then we could add a potentially some function who has x's in it. Because with respect to y, that h of x is constant. These both are equal to phi. So we set these equal to each other, and we cancel out. Let me make an argument based on this statement here. A function of y only is equal to y cubed plus a function of x only. How could the, the function of y only have any x's in it? The h of x must be a constant. There's no way that you could have a function of y only be equal to some y cubed plus a function of x only. All right, so then if that's the case, then g of y is y cubed plus c. The mystery is solved. We know exactly what phi is. And so that's the method of integrating the 1 with respect p with respect to x, integrating q with respect to y, 
and making some kind of argument based over what's left over. Your job is to figure out what phi is. All right, let's end the video now. Um, we'll pick back up with this, doing it a different way on the next video. We're already at 10 minutes, so I don't want to go too far. But thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. And uh, please reach out to me, um, email me, uh, find your way to my webpage, uh, comment down below, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.